This is Money Mentors, where I sit down with curious minds of all ages to guide them through their personal finance journey. It's all about the why, what, and the how of money. Nabil, welcome to Money Mentors. There's lots that we're going to talk about today, but before we do that, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Nabil Shah. I'm 26. I'm a product manager at a startup called Zetwork. I'm based out of Mumbai, but the office is in Bangalore. And what's your money journey so far? So being a young millennial, um, you know, the new sort of um, apps that have come up uh, with code, I've got a little bit more educated about the market, but my journey has been very short. About two years back, I invested in the market and I'm still learning. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. So, you know, we have a little ritual that we do here at Money Mentors. Today, what is it that you would like to learn? What's like really at the top of your mind or is there something which is bothering? We call it a confession. So what's your uh, confession today? Um, definitely when the right timing comes to invest. Um, I think that's a gray area for me. Uh, prices, um, inflation for me is something I don't truly really understand. And uh, the taxation, um, I think a lot of 26 year olds can tell you that we don't understand <laughs> tax and you want to make it easier. So we're going to do exactly that. We're going to talk about inflation and taxation and we'll see how both these things can work in your favor, sure. right? Sorry. Now, before we go further, by the way, uh, would you like to have something? Would you like a pizza? You have pizza? Yeah. yeah. Okay, bring it. All right, okay. Oh, okay. But you see, my pizza comes with a little twist. Are the jalapenos a twist? <laughs> so, think about it this way. I'm the pizza company. Yeah. I'm manufacturing pizzas, okay? And I'm giving you here some money to buy a pizza. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to charge you. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to charge you one card. Mm -hmm. So you pay me one card, and I give you a slice of pizza. There you go. Okay, and there you go, I give you a slice of pizza. Awesome. All right, now, here's the twist. Mm -hmm. Just imagine, we're like 20 years down the line. You're going to buy another slice of pizza. Again, I'm still the same pizza shop. Mm -hmm. You come to my shop, and I'm going to sell you that pizza slice. Now you're going to pay me five cards. Five? Okay, I have just about five, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I give you a pizza slice. My question is, Nabil, how do you feel? Cheated. That's absolutely right. And that is what, ladies and gentlemen, happened with inflation. So income and expenses, they're like Tom and Jerry. Mm -hmm. So what happens is we earn something, we spend. After some time, the cost of the same thing just jumps. So what do we want? We want our income to also jump. So it's like a Tom and Jerry going on, on and off, on yeah. and off, on and off. Let me explain to you inflation in a slightly different way and how it applies to your life, okay? Sure. And what I'm going to do is, for your benefit and for all our viewers, I'm going to write down a few things. Sounds okay? good. What do you do with your money? I mean, how do you spend it? I would actually go out with friends, shop okay. clothes, Okay. And um, save up for a nice holiday. So you'd like to go out with friends, okay? Yeah. So can we just call it outing? Sure. Okay, when you go out with your friends, what do you spend? Around uh, a thousand rupees. Okay, around a thousand rupees. Yeah. 20 years back, you know what I was spending? Hmm. Just that. I thought you were going to say 10 rupees. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what you will spend? Say 20 years in the future? Um, if I go with the math here, I would say... Uh, You're 10, right. Yeah, 10,000. You're right, absolutely. Absolutely. So, okay? Sure. Do you get the idea what inflation is doing to money? Just multiplying it, yeah. It's just multiplying it. It's crazy, isn't crazy, it? Crazy, yeah. Do you spend on fuel? Um, honestly, this has not hit me till the last couple of years, but um, it's very expensive. Yeah, but what's your full tank? Um, it's around uh, 7,000. <laughs> so, 7,000 is what your full tank is. Would you yeah. believe when I started driving, what was my full tank? I don't know, like 700? Oh. Okay. 220 rupees. That's Incredible, right? Yeah. I would even shudder to sort of write a number here because we don't know. But can you guess happen. something? Ah, you know. What we can't do is guess what the whole world will make us pay for oil. <laughs> but, but, there are lots of things that we can do, you see. The, the fundamental thing about inflation is, you know, the speed at which this goes. Yeah. That's what we call as the rate of inflation. 
So I've, I've not really understood how inflation is going to pan out and you know, how I'm, I'm going to tackle it. We can't really fight inflation, right? Mm -hmm. But what we can do is, we can't control it, but what we can do is, we can control our investments. We sure. can control what we do with our money, mm -hmm. right? There is a concept in finance, in money, which we call as the real rate of return. Mm -hmm. uh, would you know what's the fixed deposit rate today? I'm just going to guess. It's around 6 to 8%. Say 8%. Sure. Okay, let's just use that as an example. Mm -hmm. So, if 8% is what you will make on your investment in a fixed deposit. Mm. And if inflation is at 6%, then the real rate of return is 8 minus 6, yeah. which is? Like 2%, 2%, of course, yeah. And that is not yet the end of the story. Mm -hmm. You're going to pay some tax on that money that you're going to earn. Oh, wow. Now, look at it this way. A lot of people are still thinking what to do with their money. They leave mm -hmm. their money in saving accounts and current accounts. What do you earn? 3%. Know. Okay. Okay, so what's the real rate of return? Like nothing. Yeah. So for, for you and for all the people who have money sitting in a savings account today, if you're earning 3%, 3.5% on average, and if inflation in our country is running at 6%, you know, you are actually eroding the value of your money by keeping your money in the bank account. I feel that I've put so much of my money in current account because if just generally our, our lifestyle and spending money that I'm already feeling bad and guilty about it. Would you like to know how we sort of invest money or how you should invest money yeah. and uh, so that you know that you know, you're making better than inflation, at least you're beating inflation hands down? I have invested in the market mm -hmm. around the time the lockdown started Correct. and um, I'm planning to start an SIP soon. Okay, so fabulous, okay. So what we'll do is we'll pick up different investment uh, yeah. vehicles that most of the people have. Or well, before that, one simple example for you and for everyone else who's watching. If you have one lakh rupee invested and if you're earning 8% on that, what's your earning for the year? 8,000? Yeah. Okay. Out of that 8,000 rupees, you have to pay, let's say 20% or 30% tax. Okay. So if out of the 8,000 rupees, if you're paying 30% tax, mm -hmm. 8 threes are 24. Yeah. So you lose 2400 rupees for taxation. Yes. You're left with 5600, mm -hmm. which is 5.6%. Mm -hmm. And then on that, if you apply inflation, which is at 6%, your return is like negative. minus 5, yes. It's minus like minus. 5, yeah. Right? Minus 0.5, precisely. We have to, at all points of time, keep this real rate of return mm -hmm. at the back of our minds before we start an investment. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, I'm going to ask you a few products and which is going to help you and which is going to help everybody who's watching this also to figure out what's the real rate of return. Sure. Okay. Have you invested in an insurance policy? Have you bought an insurance policy? Um, I personally haven't bought any. Yeah. Okay. So for a lot of you who have got a life insurance policy, you know what's the average rate you're earning there? About 5%. And Nabil here is going to tell you what's the real rate of return on that. Minus one. Fabulous. How much does your provident fund give you? I don't know. 7%. Okay. So, Nabil, what's the real rate of return for that? Plus 1%. <laughs> percent, yeah. Do you have a PPF investment? I think, again, through my current organization. Public provident fund? Yes. So, a lot of people who are salaried have a provident fund. A lot of people who are not salaried, who are self-employed, who are running a business, very often tend to invest in a public provident fund. Very popular product. We get 7% returns on that. So, Nabil, the real rate of return on that? Again, Positive one. Percent, Positive one yeah. percent. Now, let's talk about the investments that you're thinking of doing. Yeah. Mutual fund, SIPs. Do you know what's the average historical rate of return on that? So, this excites me because you generally see a lot of uh, people making insane returns of yes. like 22, 25 percent, sometimes like 35 percent. Is that even possible? Yeah, I mean, that's possible. But on an average, we look at a 10-year, 15-year, 20-year kind okay. of a return. So, when you take a mutual fund on a 10-year basis, your average return is between 12 to 15 percent. Okay, sure. Right? So then it would be plus 6% or plus, plus 6%, 9%, yeah. Exactly. So a mutual fund, an equity investment, something that Nabil is planning to do here, can bring you 6 to 9% positive returns, which is real rate of return above inflation. Amazing. And that's the way you will sort of defeat inflation hands down. Therefore, it's important that we invest sure. at a real rate of return, which is at least positive 
or largely positive. So is there a catch to this? You know, because I would get very excited when you say I can get 12, 15 percent. That's right. But what is your advice on like someone of my age to not get sort of uh, caught in between a wrong fund or to have our research and diligence correct? You know, Nabil, it's very simple. Just don't do anything speculative. Yes. So you're giving your money to a professional. He's going to take care of your money. He's going to invest it. He's not going to do speculation. He's sure. going to make a long-term investment. That's how you'll be able to multiply your money. What happens when, you know, nowadays there's a lot of like social media talk, etc. You go to a party, people again are talking about it. Correct. And there's a lot of FOMO that sort of kicks in when someone's found a new fund in Delhi and someone's Correct. talking about some algorithmic fund in, in Bangalore. Then what does someone do, right? Like, should I stick the course of time or should I sometimes look at investing some more money I make into some other fund. It's okay if you have invested a little bit of money in fixed deposit. It's okay if you've got a little PPF going for you. It's okay if you've got your provided fund. You don't have a choice. You have to contribute there. Mm -hmm. But you should do things like you should start upgrading. You get into mutual funds, then slowly get into stocks, then go into quants, then algos, and you know, you can do all of sure, that sure. as your wealth sort of moves in. Great. But that brings me to a very important area. Please understand that the number of products that we have in our country today in terms of tax zero products are very few. You know, Provident Fund, PPF, there's just very few RBI bonds, etc. Mm -hmm. But most of the products we pay tax. However, there is a beautiful thing that we can do. We can take tax deductions, we can have tax breaks, you see. Yeah. So we have a section called Section 80C. So what happens is it's quite beautiful, right? you have up to 150,000 that you can invest every year, mm. which is beautiful. Why? Because if you are in the 30% category, then you are saving 30% of tax by making that investment. So if you invested 150,000, 30% of that, which is 45,000 rupees out of your annual tax bill, you're saving. That's a lot of money. Money yeah. saved is money earned. See, you can do a lot of things in that section ATC, mm. right? One is what is known as an equity link saving scheme. For short, ELSS. You could invest here. It's like a mutual fund, but it's a special mutual fund scheme which has a tax break in it. So if you invested money here, you could actually save your tax. And this is ELSS. SS, okay. right? You could also buy a ULIP, which is brought forward to you by an insurance company, very similar to a mutual fund, but there are a little cost in that. The cost is a little higher than ELSS but broadly works out to the same over a 15, 20 year period. But that's the other option that you could have, right? You could invest here and also save the same amount of tax. You could take a deduction to that extent, right? And the third interesting thing which a lot of people can do, the ones who have a home loan, you don't really need to do much because whatever you're paying to your home loan as principal from your EMIs for the year, also qualify for a deduction under this, which means if you've actually bought a real estate property, you might be actually doing tax saving. And if you're married, then you get double tax saving because in the same home, if you've got a home loan where both husband and wife have taken the loan, both of you get a 1,50,000 benefit each. So if I have to buy a house worth a crore, yeah. and I take and I'm in, that, in the 30% range, then if me and um, let's say my partner takes uh, 50, 50 lakh, 50 lakh, how will that sort of play out then? So it's not that you and your partner, you and your wife are taking 50-50. Yeah. Both of you are jointly borrowing 1 lakh. Mm. All right. Now you may choose to pay the EMI. Let's for simplicity say the EMI is 1 lakh. Okay. So both of you are paying 50,000 each. Mm. Now on a 1 lakh loan, approximately the interest rate would be about 6%. So you're paying about 6 lakhs as interest, but your EMI is 1 lakh. So 1 lakh every month and 12 months means you pay 12 lakhs to them. Okay. Okay. So out of the 12 lakhs, 6 lakhs is your interest. But 6 lakhs is what both of you have paid as principal. Hmm. But out of that 6 lakhs, both of you get a 1.5, 1.5 lakh tax deduction. Okay. What if you go up a range and you're buying houses worth, let's say, 5 to 7 CR? So, so what happens there is the deduction is limited to 1 lakh 50. So make okay. the most of what's available. Okay, right? great. Yeah. When your income goes up, when your cash flows are adequate when they cover you well only that point of time think about tax deduction so Karthik, I had another question yes, is please. on the first two uh, examples you gave how so is that um, the only tax deductible uh, mutual funds or is that one of many that is one of many 
I've talked about a category. Okay. Within that, there are lots of companies providing this. But it's one of the best ideas, in my opinion, which gives you the best bang for your buck. Right? Okay, nice, nice. Nice, right? Yeah, great. Yeah. So, Nabil, you know, we have a little ritual here as well, uh, when we are almost finishing our conversation. What are some of the key takeaways for you? Some two or three or four takeaways that you think you can immediately action in your own financial journey? Um, I would say not investing um, in current and savings accounts, not leaving your money idle. Yeah. So, don't leave money idle. That's your first takeaway. Uh, the second one would be around those two schemes that you told, you spoke about, uh, that is ELSS and ULIP. Yeah. So go for ELSS, go for ULIPs, okay? And the third would be to check the RRR, the <laughs> the real rate of return. Yeah, he's made a fabulous abbreviation for us. RRR, check RRR every time. Check the real rate of return. You now know how to do it. So Nabil, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you all for joining in today and I really hope that you also had some great takeaways for yourself. There is a lot to learn, I know, but we'll take one step at a time, right? So stay tuned. This is Money Mentors and this is where we teach you how to make your money work and how to kickstart your financial journey. So stay tuned. See you next time.